Hey everybody, Jeff Schneider here, and today we're talking about how to practice for a long time. That's actually not what we're talking about today. We're talking about the effects of practicing for a long time, like 12-hour days. So back when I was a freshman in high school, I read this interview with Charlie Parker, and in it he says, Well, I used to put in at least 11, 11 to 15 hours a day. Yeah, that's, that's what I wondered. Well, that's true, yes. I did that for over a period of three or four years. Oh, yeah. I guess that's the answer. <laughs> That really set the bar for me as far as what was necessary to get good at improvising the saxophone, jazz, music, whatever. So I, I kind of took on this belief that, okay, if I'm going to get good, I need to practice a lot. So I would spend all night practicing, set aside any like serious schoolwork, and just uh, focused on shedding my lip would bleed onto my reed. I'd have to stick like this crumpled up piece of tissue on my bottom teeth just to keep my teeth from hurting my lip. In college, I got tendinitis, so I really put my my body through the ringer. But I got a lot of skills that way. You get good when you do something a lot. No surprise there. But what was interesting was thinking back to the difference in my shedding between high school and college. In high school, I was like, this big fish in a small pond. So sometimes I would practice like in the band room when I had some free time. And if people were in there with me or walking through the hall, I didn't care because I felt like really good about my playing. And then in music school where everybody was just amazing, there was a lot more of that self-conscious, don't listen to me, maybe I'll play quietly, I'll practice something that I feel comfortable with. I, you know, there, there were a lot of kids at school who would actually put their music stands in the windows of the door to block the view of anyone walking past. So no one would be able to tell who was practicing in that room. There was this like joke amongst the jazz musicians that only the classical musicians would do that. And, and the cool thing to do was just leave the window open. But... If the music stand happened to be there already, I left it there. And that actually ties into the real problem with practicing so much and just playing so much in general is that, you know, if you're practicing an hour or two a day, it's kind of like a hobby. And maybe if you're practicing four hours a day, it's kind of it's more like a job. But once you start doing something eight, nine, 10, 11, 12 hours a day, it really becomes part of your identity. And the issue with that is, is that if you're not sounding good, that you're not feeling good about yourself. And if you're sounding great, then you're feeling great about yourself. And it's just this volatile, it's a roller coaster of self-worth. And it's this paradox because on the one hand, you need to practice to get better. But as I said, when you do it so much and it becomes more and more of your identity, it's really hard to separate the two and make it and make a distinction between your your worth as a person and your ability to play the saxophone or the piano or whatever. You know, there's something to be said for healthy practicing. And I think when most people think about that, it's like, okay, how do you, you know, how do you hold your instrument properly or sit up with good posture and all the rest? And there's Alexander technique and, you know, all of these physical therapies that are tailored to musicians. Like I said, I got tendinitis in um, my freshman year of music school. And I learned these stretches to get my, my wrists and my forearms to feel better. And that, that worked. But that was all physical. It didn't address, there were no therapies to address the mental side of things. And I'm sure there are if you go seek that out. But it wasn't something that was made known within that music school, music school community. I don't know if things have changed since then. But I don't think it's talked about enough, this idea of your identity being attached to how well you play. And um, that's dangerous because I've known amazing musicians with enormous amounts of talent and dedication who couldn't showcase their talents and who couldn't showcase their abilities because of the, uh, that voice in the head, that, that, um, that inner critic. Your worth as a person is not how well you play the saxophone or the piano. And I'm talking to you, but I'm also talking to myself. Another mental shift that I've tried to make and encourage others to make is this idea of getting good at music versus making good music. What's the difference between being good at music and making good music? 
If you focus on making good music, it becomes something bigger than yourself and you're not so attached to it. And I think this is actually the advantage of like a band versus being a, a hired gun where you're just a soloist. When you have a band, it's about making good music. When it's like a soloist mentality, it's being good at soloing or whatever. That's something to mull over. Are you focusing on being good or are you focusing on making good music? And if you focus on making good music, it takes that that pressure off the individual and it, it puts the focus on the music itself rather than how well you're doing it. The quality of your work, there's importance there, of course, and you can you can work to improve it. But it's separate from your worthiness as a person. This is a message I wish I, I don't know if I heard it, if I did before, it didn't land. It's landing with me now, so hopefully for some of you, it's landing as well. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.